Okay, everyone, this is Cindy Duncan again. This is part two of my estate sale haul, or this current estate sale haul. Anyway, I will try to go through pretty quickly. I'm sitting down, so I'm in a different position. Hopefully I can let you see this well enough. There's that. There. There's that. My phone, this is the second take on this one. My phone cut out before because the first video was so big. So I have to start over again. But I think my cat has gone somewhere else, so that's good. So she's not here to bother us. My husband's home for lunch, though, so we may hear him in the background. Who knows? Anyway, I had a lot of these types of doilies. I'm not quite sure um, what they were originally attended, intended for, but kind of cool. Um, this lady had quite a few of things like this that she had taken apart. I think this might have been a valence at some point in time. I don't know. I don't know for sure what that was. Another one of those. I'm not, not quite as talkative right now. I don't know if it's because my husband's home or I'm tired or what. <laughs> I took a break and went and made lunch, so now I'm back. Isn't this cool? I don't know what this is actually called. Um, and I don't know whether it's machine done or hand done. I think this might be that fillet work. I don't know, but isn't that pretty with the eagle on it? Um, but there was quite a bit of lace in those piles, too, and these things look like they've been cut out for, um, I don't know, a project with rounded corners on those as well. More of those. Like I said, I think I was a little bit crazy because I went and actually ironed all of these, and I had to go out and buy a strip spray starch. I don't iron. It's something that... My mom did when I was a kid. My mom would iron everything. All my dad's shirts, all of that sort of thing. She was always ironing. And consequently, when I was a kid, I would iron stuff at home because that's what I saw. But I just, as I became an adult, decided that I just really didn't care for ironing. <laughs> and therefore, I didn't do it. Um... So I don't buy clothes that have to be ironed. And um, my husband, if there's anything that needs to be ironed, usually irons his own clothes. Or he doesn't. Then there's that. Um, so this was different for me to go through and iron all these things. And spray starch. I don't think I had spray starch in my own personal home ever. Um, Mom had spray starch. That's how come I knew it existed. <laughs> But I never had spray start. Um, but it certainly does make the linens look nice. Oh, yeah, this is all together. This is just a bunch of lace. And I'm telling you, as I was going through this stuff, I was just flying. Up, flip, 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 flip. Grabbing, you know, whatever. I would look at it real quick just to see if it was something I was interested in. And I would flip it aside and stick it in my box. Um, just to make sure that I didn't lose it. <laughs> and it's so funny people would come in and they would see my box there with me <laughs> they, they would ask fortunately um, they would say is that the keep pile <laughs> I wonder if they were shocked that that was my keep pile I don't know I'm like yep that's my stuff and they're probably disappointed that they didn't get there earlier because me and the other lady on the floor were getting it all. Um, I've got a couple of these that will be really nice to cut out for smaller doilies, for doily books and things. Those are kind of nice. I'm trying, I'm trying to sit down rather than stand because I was getting tired standing in the last video. So putting my doilies aside and keeping them neat after spending so much time 
Ironing them is a challenge. Here's another one with all the little doilies that can be cut out. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, like I said, this is probably the best one that I've been to as far as this kind of thing goes um, with the linens. Usually at an estate sale, I might pick up a couple of things. Um, but this one was just unbelievable. Um, this one has a bit of damage in it, but I there. look look at how that hangs. Isn't that pretty? I mean, that'll be nice to hang off of a fabric book. I'm, I'm real happy with that one. Kind of a squarish shaped doily. This one has really loose threads. I don't know if this is... See how that is? I don't know if that's a machine-made one or not. And I don't know if all of these are vintage or not either. I know one in particular, I don't think, I don't know if I've shown it yet or not, but one in particular actually had um, TJ Maxx tags on it still, so I know it wasn't vintage. Like this one, I'm not sure if this was handmade or... I just don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff. I love it, but it's not, I mean, I'm not that well-versed in it to know all the ins and outs of them. I have another one of these. Not. I don't think it's in this shape, in a darker color, but this pattern um, somewhere else. Very interesting. It would make kind of neat flowers. Of course, if you cut out one flower, let me show you. You cut out one flower, like let's say you well that one's a little damaged, but let's say you cut this out, all these petals to make a flower. Then you're cutting into the next one. You're cutting a petal out of the next flower. So yeah, I'm not sure how I would use that. There's this one. This is an interesting. Uh, it's raised in the various areas. I don't know if that's because she they sewed the pieces together. I don't know. I'm just a beginning crochet er, if that's the word. <laughs> um, so I'm not quite first on that stuff either. But this one was really different. Isn't that interesting? It's got the little linen pieces there and they're all attached by chain, crochet chain. And they're different colors, so I believe that this one was handmade. Look at how this one is lighter than this one. So, kind of fascinating. Interesting piece. Never seen one like that before. <clears throat> While I'm doing that, I'll tell you a little story. I just... At lunchtime, I made a lunch for myself and my husband from something that I had in the freezer from a company called Dream Dinners. Um, I don't know if you have anything like that by you or if you've ever heard of it, but we used to have a thing um, here in Ohio a number of years ago that I fell in love with. It was called My Girlfriend's Kitchen, and Dream Dinners is, is almost identical to it. And it's the thing where you go and... You prepare a meal on location to the recipes that they provide you, and they do all the prep work and the cleanup and everything. And so you prepare these meals, you take them home, you stick them in your freezer, and then you pull them out and you make them according to the directions that you put um, with the item. And it's nice for families because it takes the guesswork out of what's for dinner because you just keep something thawed in the refrigerator and you can make it. My husband can make them and has. I mean, they're pretty easy to follow the instructions. Um, and I really like them, unfortunately. Okay, so the, my girlfriend's kitchen used to be here by, by me, just, I don't know, say about a 40-minute drive away, half an hour, 40-minute drive. 
in an area I normally go to anyway. And I liked my girlfriend's kitchen concept because I liked the area um, where we made our meals. It was appealing. They had um, artwork on the walls. They had a sofa in the center. You could bring a bottle of wine so you could make your food and you could eat, you know, or not eat, but have a glass of wine. Um, you could have uh, girlfriends come with you and you could all do it together and it was a nice social time and it was a the place was decorated nicely um, and their model didn't work for them <laughs> it's a long story to go into but at one point in time they raised their prices by like 25 percent and I I even complain and I think enough people complain about that huge price rate raise at that time um, and other things happened they went up closing there was another one around here at that time called DIY dinners that it also closed so I kind of thought that that all these places had closed until I isn't this one fun I interrupt my story look at this look, look at this it's got like a double layer on the edge all the way around you see that? It's just really kind of cool. It's also a very different one I haven't seen before. But that's kind of neat. Anyway, um, so I thought they had all gone the way of the dinosaur. Until someone I knew had told me about, um, I don't know if it was Dream Dinners or not, but in, in Maryland, they went to it. And so that got me to look to see if there was anything close by me. And I found one in Columbus area, Ohio, which is about a two-hour drive from me. <laughs> and believe it or not, I actually go down there. I make a day of it. I travel two hours to go do this thing. I make um, 13 different meals, sometimes as many as 15 or um, 16 different meals. Bring them home, store them in my freezer, and then I've got food for the rest of the month. Um, and... As far as cost goes, I find that it fits into my budget pretty pretty nicely. And like I said, it takes away from having to think about what I'm going to cook. You know, worry about any of that. I, there's always a meal that my family can eat. Now, I will say that my youngest daughter, who is 17, has decided that she doesn't like any of those dinners. Actually, she doesn't like anything that we make. <laughs> anything. She just wants to eat junk all the time, eat out, eat Chipotle, eat anything other than something that we would make. So um, it works real nice for my husband, but she never eats it. Um, there are very few things that I get as a meal from Dream Dinners that she'll eat. And I don't cater to that. She's on her own. She doesn't eat what we want. She's on her own. And she has a job, so she often buys her own food. Or she makes whatever she wants. Um, I learned that lesson a long time ago. I had a friend who lived across the street. She, she, how many sisters did she have? One, two, three. There were four girls in the family. And I would go over, and their mom's so sweet. <laughs> I would go over there, and mom would be in the kitchen, and mom was making dinner. And mom, um, it's an ethnic family. And mom was doing all this great stuff to make dinner. She was uh, pounding, or not pounding, but doing spices in a mortar and pestle. You know, and she was doing all this great stuff and pounding chicken. And, and I was always fascinated by her cooking. And, and one day I was over there and I realized that she like had several different things going at once. And I asked her about it. <laughs> and she told me... <laughs> She used their names. I won't use their names there. Well, daughter number one won't eat this. So this meal is for daughter number one. Daughter number two won't eat that. So this other thing is for daughter number two. So basically, oh, and then her husband liked, you know, whatever this other thing was. So basically, this woman was making five different meals, at least four, maybe five different meals for her family every day. And I thought, and I told her she was nuts. <laughs> never been, I've never been a shy person. So I told her she was nuts. And I vowed right then and there, and I think I was, you know, a teenager at the time, 
that I would never, ever do that, that that was just crazy that I made, would make what I would make. And if you didn't like it, you were on your own, you know, you could pick what you wanted from the meal or you could make your own stuff. And I don't have a problem with my older daughter. I don't have a problem with her making her own stuff, but I certainly am not going to, I mean, not my older one, my younger, certainly not going to make something special. I try to get things that she likes. There's a, um, meal that Dream Dinners makes that she likes. Um, it's a bacon macaroni and cheese thing, and I know she likes that, so I try I try to get things that she likes, but she just, nothing she likes. So, anyway, those, I think that's the end of the doilies. I got also, and we'll see if I can open it one-handed, um, these things were loose on the table of all this stuff, so I grabbed these. Isn't this cute? Like I said, I think that this lady was a kindred spirit because she just kept all this stuff. Look at this. No toys up. I have a problem. My eyesight is not the greatest, and so <laughs> I probably need, oh, this like pains me to say it, I probably need trifocals but I won't even wear the bifocals um, but so I have my camera in front of my face which I really need reading glasses to see to see well and then I have this stuff here on the table which I don't need glasses at all to see I see that just fine but then anything off in the distance I would need um, glasses to see far away um, so sometimes when you see blurriness on my video, I really do apologize for that. And it's simply because I can't see while I'm filming. I don't know if it's sharp enough or not. Um, look at this. Speaking of sharp enough, this is a piece of tatting that was in this box on her table. Excuse me. That's a really cute stuff. So these are just all little snippets of stuff that were just on the table and I would come across them. Pick them up, throw them in my box. <laughs> and so then I had fun when I came home, just going through everything, pulling stuff out, um, seeing what I actually got, because I didn't know. My my goal was just to get it in the box. Did I like it? Put it in the box. <laughs> as fast as I possibly could, so that I didn't lose anything, so that nobody swooped in and took my stuff. I won't take these out of the bag, but this was in there too. Got that. Um, oh, um, here's some more. Man, just running. Oh, here's these. These are a whole bunch of vintage. Um, it's hard to do this with one hand. These are vintage aprons. Oh, there's that sweet little vintage apron. Here's this one. One of these, pardon me for, I have to hold this with my camera hand. Um, I think it was this one. Look at how sweet and delicate this is. It's small. I can't even imagine. It must have been for a child because I don't think it would fit me. And then it has this um, beautiful embroidered um, work on there. And I think it was this one that I picked up while the other lady was doing her, um, on the floor going through her stuff. I'm like, oh, and I knew she had already seen it. I'm like, oh, this is so sweet. I don't know what I'll do with this, but I have to have it. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's just the way it is. Um, this is another one. It's longer. I mean, even if I use these or um, for the bottom of a fabric book, or if I gave them away, or, you know, if I, who knows, if I, if I, lots of if I's. Um, what's my time doing? Oh, I'm getting close to 20 minutes on this one, too. Here's another one. I think I might stop when I get to the end of the um, aprons. Look at this pocket. Isn't that sweet? There goes my husband leaving. He didn't want to say goodbye because I was filming. <laughs> Um, but you heard the door open. Look at that. But isn't this beautiful? I mean, these are just so precious. I've just, I've just had so much fun. 
Um, I'll just finish this one off with um, the rest of these because I can do these pretty quick. These I didn't wash and launder because they were already so beautifully pressed that I didn't want to have to press them again because these were um, these are all just napkins. So the, the, this pile is all the same. Oops. All the same. So such beautiful little details on there. And then, um, put this aside. And then there were a few of these kinds of things. These little almost like coasters with the cutouts on them. Those are the same. Actually, this, I have a third one that was the same. This is different. And then this is a little bit bigger but similar. And then a couple of this kind of, I think I had a few of those before too. And then another one of those, and then some round ones. Is this where I'm left? Look at the little, that there, I don't know what that's supposed to be, or if I have it upside down. It almost looks like a little person to me with a face and feet, but who knows. And then that one. All right, and I still have a whole bunch of stuff in that box left still, so you won't believe the stuff that I've got from this amazing estate sale. I will continue on in part three. So thank you for watching, and I hope you will continue watching. Please like and subscribe to see all of my videos. Thanks. Bye.